Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. In the next 60 minutes, I think it's safe to say I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Very rare that this program has guests on it. We have scheduled one guest for the entire hour. People on the left, people on the right do not want this interview to happen for one reason or another, but it is going to happen. I want you to know that I could, you know me, if you watch the show, find this guy is a little slimy in a dirt bag and it'll be over in three minutes. Then at the end, he could find me offensive and decide, I ain't talking to this guy. We don't know. We've never met before. We met just a few minutes ago, right before we went on the air. I have other guests on the on-deck circle just in case something blows up. You don't know. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild and interesting hour. Come on. Let me just say hi to everybody in Washington. Hello, Rom. Mm. Hey, don't forget, people in the White House, Rom, have the phone number. You can. Today, America Democratic Congressman Eric Massa from New York resigned. Actually, it happened yesterday around this time. He says the Democrats ran him out of office because he was against health care. Let me make this clear. This interview. Um, He's not on my side. I'm not having him on because he's on my side. We couldn't disagree on things more. He is a gigantic progressive. And I think I'm pretty clear on where I stand with progressives. We don't agree. That's not why I'm having him on. We don't agree on anything. He claims to have butted heads with the Democrats several times, and each time Rahm Emanuel tried to intimidate him into changing his mind. Massa claims the Democrats now pressured him into resigning. There are also threats of harassment that are now being investigated. There's new news on this. We'll give it to you in a second. He has spoken out about the corrupt nature of Washington politics and how it's destroying the country. That's Massa's side of the story. Now, is he credible? I don't know. We'll find out together. Many are saying he's just out now for revenge. He's trying to deflect attention from a coming scandal. But you could say the same thing about the other side. I don't know the first thing about this congressman, other than his voting record that I looked up today. He could be an angel. He could be a complete dirtbag. I mean, he could be a guy flying to Argentina on weekends to write poetry with his mistress. I don't know. I have no idea. But I will guarantee you this, that if there is something to come out in the next few days, this interview will only speed it up. It will only make things much, much worse for the man if he looks you in the eye and lies to you. We'll know, maybe today, maybe by the end of tomorrow or the end of the week, or maybe it will just continue to be a whisper campaign, which seems awfully darn un-American. I, uh, I recommended to him yesterday when I called him up and asked him to be on the program, I said, I'd be fair to you, but remember the truth will set you free. If they really have taken everything away from you, then you have nothing else to fear. You got something to say? Now is the time to say it. America, I believe, loves the story of redemption. Somebody who says, yeah, I screwed up, or I did this, or I did that. But they hate a story where they've been lied to. This was a sitting member of Congress up until yesterday, had to resign, now making accusations against the White House. And the White House is doing the same about him. I don't know what the truth is, but we're going to sit down and try to find it. During this hour, I need you to ask yourself these three things, because really this is all it comes down to. Is there anything new to his charges of corruption? We've told you about corruption on this program over and over and over again. When he says he's been intimidated, oh, I, I believe it because I've seen it firsthand myself. But is there anything new to the charges? Can he bring anything to the table? Do you believe what he says about corruption in Washington? This is important. Do you believe that this corruption, what he's going to tell you, is true? If so, does it affect you? Because if it doesn't affect you, it's just a good, interesting television story, I guess. And that's not what this show has ever been about. I've told you, I won't waste your time. If it doesn't affect you, Turn the channel, go someplace else. The last one is, do you believe what he says about himself? And does it affect you? If not, this ain't a soap opera. Turn the channel. So far, the allegations range from using the F word to criminal activities. I mean, we've heard everything. 
At this point, uh, we've got nothing but hearsay, whispers and rumors. I'm, uh, I'm going to be asking pointed questions today, but shouldn't a man be expected to um, face his accusers? Or is this now just a country of whisper campaigns? I told you last week about my grandfather, and he was a great storyteller. And if you are lucky enough, to, like me, to have somebody who tells you stories all the time. I remember my grandfather sitting there and listening to him tell stories. One thing I noticed was a pattern in stories. There are always three kinds of characters. There's heroes, there's villains, and then there's the character that is there but for the grace of God go I. In this next hour, ask yourself, is this man one of those three? Because... He is one of those three. I'm just not sure which one it is. This is quite a story. Joining me now, Congressman Eric uh, Massa. He is a congressman from New York. How are you, sir? Good to be here. And, I, and I'm not a congressman anymore. Let's be clear I, about it. I think once a congressman, always a congressman. Well, but, um, and, and can I just start off with something? Sure. I wasn't forced out. I forced myself out. I failed. I didn't live up to my own codes. I own this. I take full and complete responsibility for my misbehavior, and goodness only knows what allegations they're going to throw at me. There's even new ones today, and we'll talk about that. I own, I'm, not, okay. I'm not blaming well, anybody. Let me, let me start here, then. Okay. Let's, let's get this out. Um, the new allegations came out about 90 minutes ago. That's right. That Isn't that odd time just with the program? Um, <laughs> that usually happens. Um, so... The new allegations, first it was, you made an off-color remark, or you hit on a guy at a wedding. I, I, so Explain that one first. Okay, so we're at a wedding, New Year's Eve. Everyone had too much to drink. There were 300 people there. I, I went with a bridesmaid, danced with her, sat down. I went back to my staff, all the bachelors. They all made the, the, the remarks that you can imagine about you ought to do this, you ought to do that. I grabbed a guy. Tussle and Sarah, no, I ought to do it to you, and there were other words, and they're all out there. I gave a full and complete disclosure, and I left because I realized the party was getting to a place that I shouldn't be at. And I did it. Now they're saying I groped a male staffer. Yeah, I did. Not only did I grope him, I tickled him until he couldn't breathe, and then four guys jumped on top of me. It's my 50th birthday. It was kill the old guy. You can take anything out of context. By the way, we was all your wife at that one? No, this isn't a townhouse. We all live together. All the bachelors in need because nobody can afford in Washington, D.C. to pay the outrageous rents. My chief of staff had a conniption and said, you can't live there. That's not congressional. So I moved into my office. But it's true. And here's the point, Glenn. No matter how, no matter what I say, it doesn't matter. If somebody on my staff was offended, was uncomfortable, thought I was inappropriate, I own that. It's why I resigned. We all signed a code that I wrote, a code of ethics in January, because we wanted to tighten the ship up. And I, we did. No, no, it's not working. But anyway, and, go ahead. And we didn't, and we didn't, and I didn't live up to it. What my attackers don't get, and trust me, this is all a planned and calculated, we'll leak this, we'll leak that. You, let, me, let me just stop you here. Um, let me say the same thing I said to Rod Blagojevich when okay. he was on this program. There's a comparison. Um, yeah. Uh, you've been looking me in the eye the whole time you've been talking to me. Um, that, that requires, if you're lying, that requires a soulless person. Do you believe in God? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, I do believe in God. All right. Um, That's why I'm alive. If you, are, if you are lying, do you realize the damage that you're doing, not just to you, but your sweet wife, who I met beforehand, and... She's, she is a sweet woman who believes you, your children who are in college who believe you, but the also parents, the damage you're doing. My staff? But the damage you're doing to the country as well. That's why I resigned. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. I own this misbehavior. Okay, but, but there's a difference between misbehavior and what they're accusing you of. Here, let me, let me okay. just say this. Somebody says, I groped male staffers, female staffers. Um, you know, I was fondling a cat, whatever it is. I don't resign. I stand up yes, and I say... Yes, no, you do. No, and here's why. No, well, I don't. Well, I do, and here's why. Because it doesn't make any difference what my intentions were. It's how it's perceived 
by the individual who receives that action. And, and we set it up so that it could be completely... Your on name is at stake here. And that... No, 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 no. Not just your name. Everybody's name. Your children's That's name. That's right. Okay? So uh, there are some, there's something called honor. You are a Navy guy. So the only other honor. thing... Honor. Glenn, the only thing I can do is slip my wrist and bleed out here on the... I'm telling you, I was wrong. 